Okay, so people are coming in, and I'm the I'm the host with the ultimate power. So I'm going to still I have to keep my eye on the waiting room while also facilitating. So I'm going to do my best in this situation. Uh, uh, doing this. I'm easily distracted. But uh, Pierre, thank you so much for inviting me to do this. I'm really excited about it. And I put together some stuff tonight that I'm hoping uh, will help people in the current situation in terms of how we're working remotely. Um, so a few things before we start. Uh, you guys, I'm sure, have all used Gallery View before in Zoom. I think that that's a much nicer way of seeing everybody, of course, on the screen. So, uh, But you get to control that. Um, this is going to be highly interactive. We're going to do exercises, breakout rooms. We're going to do drawing together and, and these kind of things. So um, if you don't want to participate in anything, it's totally fine. So, if, you know, for the icebreakers and things, if you don't want to answer any of the questions, just say pass. It's no problem. And what I would ask from your fellow breakout room uh, attendees is that when somebody passes, there's no questions asked. You don't have to, we don't dive into why they're passing. They just get to pass. So please respect that. Um, and in every breakout room, it would be really nice if one person that's in the room would be the timer just to make sure that we keep track of the time and that everybody gets a chance to speak. So maybe the, the person with the, with the name that starts lowest on the alphabet or highest on the alphabet, let's say lowest on the alphabet. So the person whose name is lowest on the alphabet, you get to be the timer unless there's somebody else who really wants to be the timer um, in the breakout room. Uh, and there, we will be taking a break halfway through because one of the things with online meetings that I learned early on after interviewing NASA is that we shouldn't be online for more than 45 minutes at a time without taking a break. So we are going to take a five, 10 minute break in the middle of this, just a chance to go to the bathroom, do some jumping jacks, get some fresh air, uh, stretch the legs and then come back. It's, it's healthier, I think, and hopefully you'll find that you're also more refreshed after the break. Uh, you will need a pen and paper for this. So if you have something nearby, we won't need it right away, but if it's something nearby, then uh, make sure you have something to write with because mixing physical and virtual is a good way of keeping people engaged. Awesome. I'm a, I'm a notorious notebook person myself with pen and paper, uh, even though I like to do everything else virtually, so I think it's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with, uh, let's see, and there's some background typing noise. So if you are not muted, please mute yourselves. I prefer if you're unmuted, but if you have background noise, or if you're typing, please mute yourself because it uh, affects the quality of the call for everybody. We're going to start with a series of icebreaker questions. We're going to do three different questions, three types of icebreaker questions to show you what, what's, what different styles do. We've all done these kind of icebreakers before, but I think it's really fun to meet each other. So I'm going to put you into breakout, small breakout rooms. The first question is going to just be a super quick and easy question. So quick and light. If you go to a breakout room and you find that the people there are not speaking or videos are not on for whatever reason, just come back to the main session and I'll put you into another room. So the first question is just going to be your name, where you're from, and your favorite food and or drink. Favorite food and or drink. So something just super quick and easy. So I'm going to open breakout room. So there's going to be three to four people in the room. I'm going to give you Three minutes for this question. So it's really just super fast. Name, location, and favorite food and or drink. So this is our first question, and here we go. All right, did you guys just come back from your breakout rooms? Oh, yeah, you're coming back. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close all the rooms yeah. in. It was a quick and easy question. Here we go. And you can get ready for the next one. So the next question is a little bit, a uh, little bit more difficult, and it'll require a piece of paper and a pen. I'll wait for everybody to come back since all the rooms are closing. Thirty more seconds till everybody's back. So you can be thinking about for those who are coming back now. You can be thinking about when you're feeling at your best. You're like what? Just be thinking. What is that answer? When everybody's back in fifteen seconds will continue. So when you're feeling at your best, you're like, what? Here we go. Everybody's coming back. Those questions were too difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always go yeah. with mother's, mother's maiden name and pin number as a, as a good <laughs> yeah, birthday, <laughs> mother's. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this next uh, icebreaker is slightly more different and uh, or slightly more difficult. It is different also. Um, the next one is, 
when you're feeling at your best, you're like what? Now an image is going to come to your mind, so to most of your minds or something. What I'd like you to do is draw that image on a piece of paper. When you're feeling at your best, you're like what? And I'll give you an example. When I feel at my best, I am like a really good dance party where me and the DJ are just getting the groove on and he's playing music or she is playing music ha harder and harder and I'm dancing harder and it's just really good synergy. So when you're feeling at your best, you're like what? So go ahead. Obviously, it doesn't have to be a good drawing, as you can see my skills. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you into other rooms again, and I'd like you to explain your picture to your group. And again, if you get done early, just come back early. Otherwise, I'm going to give everybody three minutes. This is a different kind of question. So you might be in the same room as uh, some of the same people. It's random. So here we go. I'm going to open all the rooms now. Everybody's on their way back. Great, welcome back. Okay, third and final icebreaker, and I'm doing three and I'll explain the differences in the three in just a second. This third one is a more constructive one, maybe something you'd use at a professional meeting. And this third icebreaker is, why are you here? Not, I mean, in this world, like why are we here in this world? I mean, why are you here in this meetup today? So I'm gonna recreate the rooms and just give a quick explanation to folks on why you are here. So here we go. And I hope you're with different people this time. Three minutes, and then we'll move on to some, uh, some more exercises and fun. You're always first, Andreas. <laughs> Come again? I said, you're always first. Coming back from the break, I was like the fastest, but like, get me out of here. Excellent. Only back. <laughs> first. <laughs> That was totally perfect. I just got to meet the person I wanted to meet. <laughs> All right. I love that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> just like the, the Tinder of uh, meetups. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me it's see. not what I plan to deliver today, right. but. Uh, if it works, name your first. It tip. works, yeah. <laughs> Scott and I just meet in meetups these days, just about every night. <laughs> I think he's stalking me. <laughs> I'm worried about you. I started a job club for you yesterday. <laughs> if anyone's All right. and feel a bit down, we've got a job club going. So. A job club. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. So. We just did three different kinds of icebreakers. And if you want more icebreakers, I'm putting a link to some more that I've got on the website. And then if you want like a whole bunch, I've got a whole booklet you can download. Um, so there's a, there's a place on that link, but there, there's some good icebreakers to get you started. Now, as we all know, icebreakers are a good way, they call them warm ups to get a good way to people talking. But online, what icebreakers are really good for is one, to make sure that everybody can be seen and heard which is really important because that increases engagement because good online engagement is all about connection. So we wanna find ways to connect and be closer. And in order to do that, we need to be seen and heard. So icebreakers are great for that. And of course, uh, science shows that when people have spoken out once before the meeting starts, they're more likely to speak out again. So this is also another, I guess I wouldn't say a hack, but a way of increasing engagement and just making sure. And it's fun. We've learned something about each other that we may or may not have known before. Um, so that's good. And we did an icebreaker that was quick and easy, the favorite food. We did one which was a metaphor question, which gets people visualizing their answers um, and then also drawing them for others to see, which helps us to sort of visualize the kinds of people that we are. We learn about that. And then we had one that's more professional, more constructive, like, why are you here? Because sometimes we're in meetings with clients and you don't want to do a silly icebreaker, like take a picture of your feet and show us what's there. Or, you know, what's your, if you were a dog, if you were an animal, which one would you be? I mean, sometimes you need something a little more professional. So why are you here really gets people thinking about, ah, why am I here actually? Because um, as we'll talk about shortly, a lot of us are in too many meetings and we need to reevaluate why we're there in these meetings. So the next thing I would like to do is one more breakout session. Um, but in this one, I would like you to discuss what are some of the challenges that you're facing at the moment? What is something that's really hard for you? COVID has brought about uh, a whole bunch of new challenges for us, things that we may not have thought that would be very difficult. I mean, for instance, I'm used to working from home, but even I have had to figure out 
uh, you know, how do I not work 24 hours a day because I've got nothing else to do here at home and the internet sure is alluring and I run my own company and man, you know, the more you work, the luckier you get kind of thing. Um, but there is, at some point it becomes unhealthy. So those, you know, we have, we all have to struggle with that. So I would just like to do one more breakout room and really talk about what is the challenge that you yourself are facing. Um, and then we're going to, uh, I'm going to do a poll and we're going to see how many of us are facing the same kind of thing. So one more breakout room with what is it that, uh, that you're struggling with right now? So let me just make sure everybody's in a place and we'll do about three minutes. If you're done early, just come on back to the main room. Here we go again. All right, you guys are getting chatty. I had to pull everybody back this time. So that's yeah, good. Should, should have had more time for that while we were beginning to get into stuff that was worth sharing. Ah, all right. Well, let's do a quick debrief actually on this one, which is on this one, let's, I'd like to do an overall poll and then let's do some individual sharing. The overall poll, if you go to slido.com and I'm putting it in the chat, slido.com and the code is 1115. What I'd like to know is what challenges, are there challenges here that you're facing on this list? If you could check out the poll, I've, uh, I think I've enabled people to pick two. You get to pick two, you pick your top two. And as soon as people are uh, there, I'll start sharing the results in real time. And while people are filling out the poll, would anybody like to share one of the struggles that they're struggling with from the breakout groups? So Slido, 1115. And I'll share the results in just a second. I want to give people the chance to do it. But uh, anybody want to share? Simon, uh, what are some of the meaty things from your group that you were just starting to get into? Oh, you want me to share on behalf of the whole group? I'm not sure that I'm entirely competent to repeat what other people said, but there were, um, there were some degrees of things weighing very heavily on people's shoulders in terms of having a family to support and... Um, what are the prospects of finding work at the moment, given the way the world has changed? Um, I, I think that hit a couple of folk. We ma we managed because um, because people had sort of started jobs and then COVID had arrived, and so jobs that had been offered were not did, didn't turn out to be long term. Um, we were just at the beginning, beginning to get into the idea that maybe the, there was as much need or right to be optimistic as pessimistic because we're capable and adaptable people and the world changing is and, and being in environments where we try and help other people deliver change i mean i'm i'm adding my motivation behind this so i don't know whether the others shared it but we were getting positive about the conversation um so maybe there's opportunity amongst the group that has the sort of dynamics that we have that we should be beginning to be optimistic about things i i, I was talking with people yesterday and it was I described this as like having the brains had a stroke and a lot of cells have died. Uh, so that's like the whole economy collapsing. And what we need to do is get new neural connections, but they take a long time to build. Um, and we're, then we're in this bit between where a lot of stuff has died and the new stuff hasn't grown yet. And that's a difficult bit for a lot of people. For sure. It is a weird world at the moment. I'd like to show some of the results so we can get a, a view of how is the group doing. Um, so let me just go ahead and share. So one second as I find the right screen, I've got three monitors. There we go. So this is what people are, uh, are struggling with right now. The work-life balance and separation seems to be, uh, that's always, of course, uh, that's a big one right now, especially since uh, we can't separate our work and our lives very easily at the moment. Focus, I'm sure, that's uh, really interesting. So those two are super interesting. I was actually expecting people to be uh, struggling with too many meetings these days. So I see some nodding heads, that is there, but uh, it looks like and also there's some typing. So if you're typing, if you could mute yourself, I don't know who it is. So, but if, uh, if you're typing on the keyboard, please mute yourself just for the, for the 
the sound quality for folks. Okay, so I think that's, a, that's super interesting. Does anybody else want to add one of the challenges or go into depth on one of the things that they're experiencing right now? I could have a go. Yeah, I'll add a bit. Um, anger. I have a huge amount of anger just now about the whole um, George Floyd thing, and, uh, the whole right-wing politics, and I've still got my residual Brexit anger. So I'm just like one of these uh, liberal snowflakes that are just, you know, brimming with violence. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I spent well, I spent at least three hours yesterday arguing with people uh, who are, you know, friends, right, about why it was a good thing to get rid of, you know, the, the, the statue of the slaver from Bristol Harbour, right? I can't believe I'm having to say to people, right, it's, you know, it's time for it to go. Yeah. So, uh, Scott, if you want to talk one hour with me every day, this is what I do with friends, helpful. So for the anger, I had a lot of anger too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put, let me know when that Zoom call is. <laughs> Whenever you want. So there was somebody else that wanted to share. I didn't catch who it was. Well, I, should, uh, I said I'd share a, a thought, which was one of the poll questions you had there uh, was, was loneliness. And I, I, I mean, I'm coming at it the other way around again. I'm sorry, I keep doing that. But um, I'm here working from home and I have my wife here as well. So from that perspective, it's, it's the opposite for me. I, and I do quite a lot. Like you, I've done a lot of working from home for um, a long time. And I've been constantly aware of the fact that a lot of other people find working from home a, a dynamic of loneliness because they don't have other people in the house and I always have done and it's therefore it's always been very much easier for me from that perspective. You know, we, we have two different spaces to work in uh, and so we don't suffer that particular problem. That's mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a spectrum on loneliness and how people experience that for sure uh, yeah. in terms of working on this. Well, and, and I was just thinking beyond that that um, I think it was you introduced me to So Coco, and uh, and that was uh, and that was just a, or is just a way for folk to have a a, a virtual co-working space. So I think that's I, th I think that's a paradigm that's got a lot of value in terms of reducing the loneliness bit. Totally agreed. Totally agreed. So I want to quickly run through a couple of the things that uh, people have been struggling with uh, when working from home and just some of the things to be thinking about. Um, well, I've structured this uh, meetup into two sort of sections. One section is how do we perfect our own game uh, in terms of individuals working with other remote colleagues? And then the next section is how do we work together online? Uh, with the team. So what are the components that we should be thinking about uh, around that? And I've put together some exercises and some things to sort of help have discussions around this. So I'm going to show a few things, hopefully very minimal slides, and then we'll go into discussions and talk more. At any point, if you want to interrupt me, feel free. This is supposed to be interactive, so please raise your voices when you have something to say. Um, totally fine with me. I'm going to share my screen really quickly just to show a couple of slides that I've put together. And what I want to just note is everything that I'm going to be talking about today, these are all tips. It's not just saying me, this is my tips for you, but these are all the tips that I've collected from other people. Um, and you can get them on my online. The podcast is available, comes out every other week with a new interview with people or in the book, which has just been republished by Wiley and will be available on the 16th of June. Um, so that's coming. So all of those things uh, are, are available. And the one thing that I've really learned from all the work that I've done is there is no one right way to work remotely, sadly. Otherwise, I would sell the silver bullet formula, um, and it would be I, it would be really easy. But there is no one right way. It is a series of experimentation, massaging things into place, figuring out what works for you and what works for your team. And what works for one team doesn't always work for the other team, and that's sort of what makes it hard. Uh, it, it, some things are rational, and some things are just not. So it is there is no one right way, which is good and bad news. Oops. But I think the exciting thing is, is that when we get remote working right, the payoff is huge, that we as individuals get ultimate freedom to work where and when we're most productive. And I think that that's a huge thing that everybody's discovering. Um, and then the company gets a stronger and more connected workforce. And for years, I've been saying, hey, 
even though even if you don't want your employees to go remote, you really should have the systems and processes in place to be able to go remote in case something happens. I never envisioned a pandemic. Uh, it was more like children are sick at home or like bad weather or something. So pandemic was kind of a new one. Um, but it's still the, the theory still holds. The more we can have systems and processes in place, the less vulnerable our companies are and we are in terms of uh, work and where we are. So we're going to talk about perfecting our own game and then how do we work together online. And I just want to start with how do we tend to our own needs and what are the things that people have been thinking about. Everything that I'm going to be talking about is not rocket science. You've heard it before, you've seen it before, um, but there is a catch and I'll explain the catch in just a second after a couple of slides. So the first one is we have to figure out what do we need to be most productive. Right, a lot of us have gone into home offices where we didn't have home offices before. Some of us had the luxury of having it. And we've been set up at our kitchen tables or maybe in our children's rooms during the day. And we have to figure out what do we need to be productive in this state. And I know we're sort of starting to come out of lockdown, but it is really good to note that we are going to be probably going in and out of lockdown quite a lot um, over the next year. So it's important that we want to make ourselves comfortable uh, and I need to just figure out, so there's some people in the waiting room, so I don't want to keep people in the waiting room. So figure out what do you need to be most productive in your office space if you need an extra monitor or maybe a better keyboard or a headset. Now is the time, actually a month ago was the time, to buy the equipment that you need to make yourself comfortable. Because camping is nice, but not for too long. And a lot of us right now are camped out in our homes. Oops, that's something that's important. The next is figuring out what is our daily rhythm. Right, like what's a natural thing of the day? My husband gets up at 7 a.m. and he is like ready to work and ready to go immediately, whereas I, it takes me like an hour to get my eyes open. I don't know why, it's just the way I am. So I'm an evening person. As soon as 5 p.m. hits, that's when, my, uh, that's when my energy levels go up. So you just have to figure out, you know, are you a morning person, an evening person? Do you have a forced schedule that you have to work within? Is there a startup ritual maybe that you need or a wind down ritual? My, my husband now gets up and walks around the block. That's his commute. And then he sits down to work before going into his home office. It works for him. So it's whatever really works for you. And again, I want to make sure I'm not leaving people in the waiting room at the moment. That's difficult to see with all the windows open. Okay. And finding our boundaries, right? We all, that work-life separation, that is really, really difficult, especially now when we can't escape uh, the work-life separation. So some people have created a dedicated space for themselves within their home, like this is where I do work and only here. Some people have set working hours for themselves. This is something that I've just recently done. I've actually mapped out, I said like, okay, I wanna work 40 hours in a week and then I map out those hours onto my calendar and then I only work those hours. So if it's all of a sudden, if I'm too tired in the middle of one of my time blocks, I lose that time. I don't make it up later. So I've set working hours for myself and I just stay within that. And for some reason, it works for me. It doesn't make sense to me, but it does. So we have to also figuring out what you need for you. Some people need separate devices. Uh, you know, you have your computer in your office and then the, the iPad for watching movies at night or something. So you separate. So however you can separate your visit, your work and your home. Sometimes it's just a simple thing like that. I used to have a room divider because I had a one bedroom office uh, and my bed was right behind me. And I would put the room divider up in the morning to, to carve out a space. And that worked like weird. It's not a separate room, but it worked. And then the last one is finding our social needs, which as Simon was saying, can be particularly difficult in these times right now since we can't leave the house and we're doing everything social online. But there are some really fun things uh, in terms of the social thing. As Simon mentioned, there is virtual co-working and there's a number of ways to do that. I'll show you a virtual office in just a second, but there is this, uh, the picture you're seeing on the right, this is a program called Focus Mate. And what it does is it pairs you up with somebody random in the world. You start the session by saying what you're going to work on and then you work together for an hour, like maybe separately or you can work online with video and then at the end of the session you get back together and you say what did you do so it's kind of like an accountability partner but it was somebody random so you can set it up with a friend but if you don't have somebody that's doing it try focus mate it can be really handy the picture on the left that you're seeing is a friend of mine we've worked together now for eight years nine years now um, we've only met once in person over just over christmas but uh we just have these co work we've started we've virtually co-worked from the beginning we just have our videos open and we talk and she's in california and i'm in the netherlands 
Oops. And the, uh, there's plenty of programs out there to uh, facilitate virtual co-working. There's all kinds of virtual offices. Sococo is one that Simon mentioned, and I put that in the chat. Another one is Remo um, that you can go to. So there's many, many of these around. Um, you just have to figure out which groups uh, are going to be compatible with you. Oops. And I said in the beginning that none of these things are very difficult and that there was a catch. And the catch is, is that working from anywhere, it can be home, it's home right now, but in the future it'll be anywhere. It's both awesome and horrible. And if you've never read The Oatmeal, that's a really fun one to uh, recommend. So definitely check out The Oatmeal. Um, but working from is both awesome and horrible because one, it's awesome because we have ultimate freedom, right? We can work when and where we're most productive. And it's horrible because we have ultimate freedom we can work when and where we're most productive. And so we tend, you know, we, we have to really be disciplined and schedule ourselves. And so that's what's difficult um, about, about uh, being able to work from anywhere. The freedom goes in both directions in that one. So that's the catch. So I need to just check uh, the waiting room because I keep hearing dings, but I don't see anybody coming in. So maybe it's just people leaving, They're dropping like flies. Oh, Pierre, it's you. You're pointing at yourself. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, awesome. So I'd like to do a quick poll before we go into uh, before the next room is I'd like to know if we go back to Slido again and the 1150, I would like to know what is it that you're working on? How are you needing to perfect your own game right now? So again, Slido.com, I'm going to put the link in the chat. Oops. And uh, somebody else mentioned uh, that they can't copy and paste from the chat. And I'm really sorry, I'm using Pierre's account and I don't know how to change that from within uh, the account right now. So Pierre, you mentioned that we are going to be making the notes available afterwards. That's not very handy. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Um, I, I will share all the notes uh, just after the, the call. So when you share this with me, I uh, will make it available uh, through the, the chat part of the, the meetup group. Great. And I'll show the results in just a second. But does anybody want to comment on any of the things that they're struggling with? And why? Something unusual during COVID, maybe. Well, Fabio speaking. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, maybe, maybe something I, I experienced uh, since the lockdown, I've been moving in uh, in three different uh, house uh strange uh, strange situation but all the time i moved uh, uh, in a different house i had uh, somehow to find again my space uh, so it took me some days maybe a week uh, to identify where i was getting more concentrated where i could be more constantly concentrated uh, and uh, any way to find a, a new rhythm because maybe the house was as well uh, let's say forcing me to to, to move uh, in different rooms uh, at different time of the day. Uh, so I found that really um, interesting. Yeah, I've, in, indeed. And I would tell people, do not underestimate how difficult it is to find your rhythm, even in just a new just somebody else's house or a new space. It is really, it can be really uh, jarring to do that. So that's why I said in the beginning, these things that I'm saying, they're really simple, but don't underestimate how difficult they are, even though they're simple. So thanks for sharing that, Fabio. I'm gonna share the results really quick so that people can see. And let me share the screen there. It's taking a second to come up. So you can see that a lot of us right now are having trouble with boundaries. We saw that again before. A lot of us are having trouble with boundaries and finding your daily rhythm. So I think sometimes it's nice to know um, through these polls that we're not alone, that uh, we're not the only ones struggling with this, that other people are struggling with this too. And I think that's the nice thing about these polls is just to understand um, it's not just you. It's a really difficult time uh, for people. And working, of course, you, you've heard this said over and over, working remote during a pandemic is different than working remote in normal circumstances. It's far more stressful. Okay. So what I'd like to do is 
Um, I was going to do another breakout room, but I, but I want to quickly just mention um, that a lot of these things I'm touching on very, very briefly. And if you want to get more, I've got a workshop that takes you really deep into some of these topics. So I'll let you know about the workshop at the end if you're interested. Um, I've got a special deal for the folks that are here tonight. Um, but I just want you to know that, that we can go way deeper into a lot of these things, especially boundaries and setting up your office space. Has anybody bought any special equipment for themselves during the COVID? Muna, you're shaking your head. And Elsa, can you share what you guys have been showing? What, what did you guys buy for I, your I offices? It. I actually, because um, for my company, we were like never had remote working. And uh, remote working was kind of like uh, the evil child, I would say. Like, it was just <laughs> like, so it's, it's still like, uh, there's still like management things. We're not working when we're working from home. So it's like still kind of they think we're doing nothing so i actually bought a docking station for for my working notebook i bought it on like second desktop so working is easy bought a new keyboard bought a headset so yep because okay. otherwise it would just be it would be a small laptop for like an eight to ten or more like 12 hour day so not working awesome elsa what did you get <laughs> Well, same, same, kind of. <laughs> I bought a second, uh, a second screen. I bought a webcam. I bought um, headset. Um, I bought some other stuff, actually. I don't know what. <laughs> I even bought some spots, like spotlights, but I'm going to uh, sell them again because I'm not using them. <laughs> wait, wait till winter. <laughs> ah, look, everybody's Ooh. got them. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> love it indeed now is the time i would say to make ourselves comfortable and scott sorry i cut you off no i was just uh, i bought um i bought a camera that captures me drawing so it's uh but they use it in schools but i can actually talk and draw at the same time so people watching can see what i'm drawing love it. actually i bought a new chair a game a game chair. I thought you said Game of Thrones chair. <laughs> no, no, because I mean, being set uh, for maybe six hours, not consecutive, I, it was uh, awful. So I bought, I spent a lot of money, probably like the screen or what else, to, to buy a comfortable chair that I can, let me say, configure as I like it. Awesome. Anybody else buy something? I brought a new microphone. Nor will it be the last time you lock yourself down. Oops, there's some. What's uh, that noise? <laughs> there's a radio program, unexpected radio program going off. I was, I was typing in the wrong keyboard. I can share. Um, I actually bought a microphone and I bought an XNA camera and I also bought myself a very big screen because I do a lot of training and coaching. Awesome. Yeah, I just bought myself a one and a half. It's a 120 centimeter monitor. But uh, then I had to buy a new computer to run it. So shucks, new all these new toys. <laughs> so now's the chance to buy the new toys. But it, uh, a little top tip. If you miss a meeting and it's recorded, watch it on your telly. Don't watch it on your laptop because you don't have to. And it's much easier to watch a bigger screen. Very smart. But just as I can't overstate it enough, if we're we're going to be in and out of lockdown for a while, depends on which country, uh, how it, and it's time to make ourselves comfortable. One, because yes, we're sitting here all day, but also because we want to be able to connect. When we go back to work, there's a lot of people that are going to be staying home uh, instead of going back to work. And we're going to be working in a hybrid situation from now on, I think, where some people are in the office and some people are remote. So we want to have the equipment in place to be able to connect no matter where we are. And some people are going to be forced. Muna, it sounds like you might be forced back for everybody. Yeah, I'm so sorry. We'll try to get everybody into the 21st century at some point, uh, but uh, there's always there's always a few. But uh, so make, sh make sure that you're comfortable and get the equipment that you need if you're in the luxury position of being able to buy uh, new equipment. And I realize that is a luxury situation for many.
So I want to, we're going to move into how do we work together online together. And what I'm going to do is introduce the topic. And then I'd like to take a five minute break because we've been online for almost an hour and I can see people are kind of getting wiggly. And I think it's probably good to take a break, go to the bathroom, get some water. So I'm just going to introduce the next topic. And then we're going to dive in when we come back from after the break. And I'll share my screen just really quickly, just to show a visual. And once we've perfected our own game, then it's time to how do we work together online with other people? And I think the first component of that, of course, is to create alignment with our team. How can we move in the same direction at the same time with the team when everybody's remote? It's so much easier when we're all together, right? We've got the sticky notes on the wall. We've got the everybody sort of moving in the same direction. And when we remote, we're kind of like herding cats. So we need to figure out how do we create alignment with each other. Oops. And one of the ways that I like to do this is by creating a team agreement and just defining what is normal behavior for our team. Do we all need to have the same core hours or can we work asynchronously? How are we going to share information with each other? How are we going to communicate? Is it going to be via WhatsApp, via Slack, via email? Some people are phone people. Other people hate the phone. Some people love the video. Other people hate the video. We as a team, especially when we're going hybrid, we need to figure out how do we move forward in the same direction um, and go together. So we'll figure out how do we create team agreements and how do we define normal? Now, I interviewed Bayat Bulman from Evernote, and he's the head of EMEA for Evernote. And he was telling me that at Evernote, they've got some remote teams. And what they've done is they've, they, they call it etiquette. So what etiquettes are just behaviors. So they've actually gone and defined, okay, what is our etiquette for meetings? So when we're in meetings, do we have people raise their hand? Is everybody on mute? Like, what are the etiquettes that we're going to do as a team? They even have email etiquettes. So, for example, when the subject changes in an email, you've got to change the subject line, and there's only one subject per email allowed. That's a rule that they've set in place for themselves. It could be the same. They've got things for calendar. They've got requirements for what's expected in your home office if you're going to work there, how you're going to do tasks. They even have like a Slack etiquette, so using threaded conversations, speaking more with emojis. They've gone and defined these things for their team uh, to make it easy to know how are we going to behave on our team. And this also takes in the cultural question into consideration because culture is all about behavior. And and when we get many different cultures together on a team, we need to figure out what is our culture as a team, which is made up of a whole bunch of different parts. So that's why I say team agreement is what is normal behavior for our team? What is the culture? How do we define that? And when we come back from the break, I'm going to do, we're going to do an exercise of creating a team agreement together for, for our fake companies and breakout rooms. So I've got a, we're going to use Retrium for this, which is an online retrospectives board. Um, and then during the break, I'm going to try to figure out how you can copy and paste from the chat because otherwise it's going to be a long URL that I'm going to send you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on a break. I'm going to put a timer on the screen. I'm going to give everybody six minutes. And what the only rule is you're not allowed to stay at your laptops. Please step away from your computers. Do some jumping jacks. Get some air. Grab some coffee. Otherwise, um, I hope you'll feel refreshed when you come back because otherwise it's the, love, the next hour is going to be really long. So go ahead and you can turn off your cameras and mute yourself. I'm going to put a, uh, the timer on the screen so you know how much we have left. And I'll see you back here in six minutes. Welcome back. Whoa, that's too loud, too loud. So I, I hope that you can feel... Oh, God, Scott's playing videos again. <laughs> I hope that you can feel uh, how refreshing taking a short break can be when you come back to a second session. So I really encourage you, if you have any meetings that are going longer than 45 minutes, uh, please take a break uh, during those meetings. So I was going to do a really quick uh, feedback fist of five uh, in terms of how people are feeling right now, but we don't have a lot of people on video. But let's just do it anyway for those that are still here on video, and I'll take a screenshot for, uh, oops, there's somebody coming in older. Oops, before I let everybody in on the waiting room here. They can always put a green tick in the um, participants list if they don't haven't got video on. That's true. That's true. If you don't have your video and you don't want to share your uh, fist of five, you can put a... Uh, you Number. can use your reaction. Yeah. Oops, somebody else is coming in before I take more screenshots. So 
make sure everybody's ah yeah you can put your green uh, tick in the participants indeed so but let's do fist of five so on a scale of one to five where one is oh man i should never have gotten out of bed this morning and five is woohoo let's get this party started where are you on the scale so i'll count down three two one and anywhere from one to five show how you're feeling right now so three two one Oh, pretty good. Pretty good in general overall. We've got a range. We've got a range, but that's good. So that is a great way of getting feedback from participants and just a quick and easy way of just seeing how people are feeling without needing to go into the whys. Um, that can also, that can be good for meetings or actually workshops that you're giving. So one of the things, uh, so we, before we went to the break, we were talking about team agreements and the importance of team agreements. So what I'd like to do with everybody is a quick exercise using Retrium. Uh, oh, and Craig, you said, how do you know time's up if you're not near your computer? No idea how people, I, I figure people have their own timers. I'll do my best to keep people informed, but uh, I can't do much more than that. I wandered <laughs> off upstairs and I was just thinking, oh, it must be time up. I better go back to the <laughs> Hoping people that, that's, just your, that's just your age, Craig. You walk into rooms and wonder why you went there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's an age thing. I've, I've had that for ages. When the music <laughs> stopped, for Neil. It's, it's called episodic memory, apparently. There's a, there's a bias for it. <laughs> so what we're going to do with this team agreement exercise, it's going to be a little bit strange. I am going to put everybody into breakout rooms again of three or four. And if I see that there's only two people in a room, I'm going to uh, put you in a new room. So if you go to a breakout room and all of a sudden you get moved, um, just know that it's because there's only two people there. And I'd like there to be about four people in the group. Actually, let me just recreate this to make it so three or four people. Let's see if this works a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly put you into a breakout room, and I'd like you to note which room that is. Just note if it's breakout new room number one or two or three or four or five or six. Just give that note, and then come back to the main room. So I'm just going to break you out, note which room you're in. You're going to need it for the next exercise, and then come back to the main room. So here we go. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into Retrium. And, and here's the link to the Retrium room. So the breakout room number that you are in corresponds with the team number in Retrium. So if you were in breakout room one, you're going to be on team one in Retrium. And what I'd like you to do now is put down one thing. If you were going to create a team agreement with your team, what is one, maybe two things that would need to be on your agreement? To, uh, to do this. So let me just show you really quickly what it looks like because there is a catch to this. So what you will hopefully see is you'll log into Retrium and you're gonna see these different notes. So what I'd like you to do is if I were on team one, I would create a note and I would say, for me, what's really important is that everyone is on time to meetings. So that's what, you know, that's what I would put, that's what I would put on my team agreement. But maybe it's something like you would like to chat more via the phone instead of email, or you would like to have that your team has core hours so that you know where everybody is, or that the response time to your messages is less than 24 hours. What is something that you would put on your team agreement? And then what I'd like you to do is create a card in your team what you're going to notice is you're only going to be able to see the cards that you write. You won't be able to see what your team members are writing right now. So when you're going, I'm going to delete mine and I'll stop sharing my screen. And so just, just give a thought to what would be one, maybe two things that you would put on your team agreement. What's a must have for you. And then I'm going to send you back into breakout rooms. We're going to reveal it and then go back into breakout rooms. Um, there is a team seven, but there shouldn't be. Oh, Hans is in Team 7. Hans, I'm going to move you to Team 5. I really apologize for doing this last minute, but you're in that room alone, and I don't want you to be alone. I so was alone in 7. I, I moved you to 6, Pierre. Sorry, how, I, Sorry. how do I know where is, what's my team? Uh, let's see, Javier, I'm going to have, I'll look it up at the moment. You are in Room 3, Javier. Oh, okay. Sorry okay. for the confusion. So go ahead, put down one to two things that you would want on your plan or on your team agreement. What's important to you? 30 more seconds to just write down. 
Michaels, oh, you sorry? remember our team name? Michaels. Michaels and I said we're in the same room, but I can't remember the name of the room. Uh, oh. Let's see. Michaels um, has stepped away. <laughs> indeed. So you're two, room two. Room two, okay. Thank you. No problem. I know it's a little confusing. But otherwise, I have to yeah. read out everybody's team names, and our, that's, uh, that takes longer, so it's easier to go into the breakout rooms. So what I'm going to do, go ahead and uh, I'll give everybody another 30 seconds. I can see some cards furiously writing, another 30 seconds. And what I'm going to do is reveal what's on the cards. And then I'd like for you in your breakout room on your team to, to discuss what is important to you on the team agreement. I'll reveal and maybe see if you can come to an agreement. If this were your team, see if you could come to an agreement on what's on there. Maybe you have the same things. So just a few more seconds. I can see a few more people writing. I can't see what you're writing. A few more people writing. Sorry, how do you get back into your rooms? I'll send you into the rooms. Oh, great. Yeah, sorry. I've got this power. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do now, uh, I apologize if, uh, if you're still writing. So I'm going to cut people off in about 10 seconds that are still writing. So make sure to finish it up. I can see that they're writing. And apologies in advance. Let this last one go here in team two. And I'm going to now reveal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to reveal what everybody's done. So one thing that I'd like to show you guys with Retrium, for those who have not used Retrium before, this is one of my favorite retros online retrospectives tools. One thing that you can do is you can group things together. So I'm going to group something from different groups. That's not the idea. That stay within your team. But for instance, I can drag... Uh, these two cards together and call this group. This is a blank. These are blank cards. So, so what I'm going to do now is send you into your breakout rooms and I'd like you to discuss what you put on there and see if you can come to some sort of an agreement. If you were going to be a team together, how would you work out your differences? So I'm going to open all the rooms again and I'll see you back here. It's only going to be five minutes at the most. And if you get done early and you, and you don't have anything else to talk about, just come on back to the main room. So here we go. Uh, and Raj, I'm going to assign you to room one. All right. I mean, he's got 30 more seconds to come back. Oh, really? We're the only ones back now. Yeah, now you guys are first. But we're going okay, to. That's because we had no idea what was going on with the board. Oh, okay. Everything's which, just moving which... around all over the place. <laughs> oh, interesting. Nothing to do with us. Somebody's just moving your cards? Yeah, everything's yeah. moving all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> and clustering and them, yeah. <laughs> Which group fun. were you in? Four. four. And we really yeah. were four. We weren't mistaken about that. Interesting. Yes. And there are other people moving your cards. <laughs> and adding and, like, clustering and... That's new. <laughs> all right. That's yes, too, yeah. <laughs> so we had some... Uh, very fast, actually. There was an overlay. It's like we could have been like a little bit more time, I would say. Definitely like agree. Minutes. That's what okay. we <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm, what I'm, so what I'm trying to do is I'm giving you, I want to give you guys like a little speed taste of a whole bunch of little, but maybe I could have gone deeper in a bunch of these. But I, what I did is I kind of put like a speed taster together so you could get a taster of a whole bunch of different exercises um, and information. And then uh, if you want to go deeper, we, we can do that in a workshop. But okay, I will note it for the next meetup is uh, less speed, more time for discussion. So uh, I'll, I got that noted and maybe for the rest of it also. Any, were there any teams that had serious disagreements over what was in your team agreement together? Any arguing, any arm wrestling? No disagreements. We decided we'd Thanks. omitted a few things and wanted to add them. Okay. What were some of the things you wanted to add? We didn't have anything on conflict um, that we'd put in individually. And when we came together, we said maybe some mechanisms by which we recognized that conflict occurs and it's good, but you need some way to break things out. So Gail was suggesting sort of different approaches. Love it. Indeed. Conflict is definitely a huge thing. And on remote teams, uh, I would say conflict training or just communication training 
is an awesome option for remote teams. You want to have different communication uh, styles in your toolbox. You may want to little, have a little bit of nonviolent communication, a little bit of clean language, some, because on remote teams, communication is key. And uh, I've noticed in myself that there's, I have a lot of work to do in this area. Um, and I was a little bit surprised at how empty my own toolbox was. So that's why I'm stating it now is communication on remote teams can be awesome, especially for working out conflict. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to show that everybody on a team has sort of a different perspective and a different need uh, in terms of alignment and what they want out of a team. And it's really good sometimes uh, for a team, you can brainstorm separately like what we did in Retrium. Everybody comes with their own ideas to a board and then we reveal those ideas to the team. So this is a little bit different than everybody just putting up sticky notes and everybody can read them. Uh, what we did with Retrium, the reason why I like Retrium so much is that it prevents the group think. It allows us to each just to come with individuals as individuals with our own ideas without being influenced with whatever somebody else on the team will have. So when you're creating team agreements together on, on your remote teams, be thinking about what can, you, uh, what can you do to bring your ideas separately so that everybody has a chance to voice uh, what it is that they really need. And that people are coming out. And uh, Gail, you've just written something in the chat that I want to... Exactly. The brainstorming. Exactly. What's a team for you when your team is at your best? They're like using the metaphor questions again in this situation. Very, very powerful. Love it. And I do really like Retrium in terms of being able to create agreements together because I think it's a nice, simple way of grouping things and then you can document things um, after you're done with the team. So if you don't have an agreement already in place with your team, I really highly encourage you to put one together. Um, and there, I do have templates available on my website. I'll put that in a link during the next break um, so you don't have to do your team agreements alone. So I want to quickly, uh, any other comments? Because I'm going to move on to how do we create presence uh, with our remote colleagues. Any comments or thoughts from that last exercise or topic that anybody wants to highlight? All right. I wait till the silence gets uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, so what I'd like to talk about next is and uh, how we can create presence on teams and why good infrastructure is so important. So I'm gonna quickly uh, share my screen again. And let's talk about presence. So one of my favorite quotes comes from Agile Bill Krebs, who is an Agile coach in the US. And he said, when I interviewed him, that people think that they wanna be co-located, but what we really want is high bandwidth communication. We wanna be able to talk to our remote colleagues as if they were in the room with us. And I always make the analogy towards Star Trek because I really like Star Trek. So, but you know, you wanna be able to be like, Lisette to bridge, report, and then, Bridge reports, and there's no coffee shop or barking dogs or screaming children in the background. It's just crystal clear communication. So we need to have a focus on how do we get that in our teams. And one of the biggest things, especially as we return back to the office and we're going to have these hybrid situations um, in most cases is we need to improve the infrastructure that we have uh, for creating presence and for communication with each other. Um, this picture is a bit of an extreme one, right? This is an old style, the old style conference room with the spider phone in the middle where you have to lean over like, hey, Bob, it's Lisette. Can you hear me? And I, I shudder to ask how many people are still working with a system like this now? <gasps> oh, no, Muna. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad there weren't more hands. <laughs> but no, it can be better. <laughs> so when we go back to the office, this is not what we want in our offices, of course. This is a much more modern version of a, of a conference room these days. Most rooms are set up so that the remote participants are visible in the room. And as you can see, the people that are sitting around the remote participants, they're not off on some wall somewhere. Actually, the in-person participants are kind of making a U-shape so that they're facing the remote participants. This also creates more presence when we're coming together in this hybrid situation so that everybody is seen and heard. Now, there's lots of tools on the market now to make these hybrid situations better. This is the meeting owl. They do have competitors for everything. I'm not, uh, I don't have an affiliate link or program with any of these tools. This is just 
showing you things. For every tool I show you, there's 20 plus competitors on the market. Meeting Owl is a 360 degree microphone and camera that will auto focus on the person that's speaking. It plugs into any system, uses everything that's quite good. Um, so if you are having these hybrid meetings, definitely invest in, if it's not you know, good conference room equipment, um, then something like the Meeting Owl so that everybody can be present and heard in the room. And we don't have these hey Bob situations. Other systems that people are sitting up, this is uh, teams that are, this is two teams in Germany. What they've done is they've just connected their teams via video. So they've got one team working in one office and another in another office, and they have the video on on the right-hand side here, and on the left-hand side is their task board. So they're actually simulating what it's like to be in the same room together in this way. So they've got the video and the sound on so they can hear each other all day, and the virtual task board up so that they know exactly where they are on their tasks. So that's another way of using video in a hybrid situation that people are going to. This is an I, office I don't want that. I hear them typing all day. <laughs> yeah, you could mute. You can also have it on mute. I mean, everybody's got a different. You know, there's there's other people that have the video on and the sound off, or sometimes the sound on and the video off. I mean, you just have to figure out what works for you, right? There is no one right way. That's a, but indeed, I wouldn't want to hear the noise all day for sure. That's just me. Uh, this is an office in uh, Melbourne, Australia, and they have people in China that they're working with. And what they've done, it's a huge office. They have hundreds of people in their Melbourne office, hundreds of people in their China office. And they've set up these video cameras and giant screens in both places so that you can accidentally bump into your Chinese colleague uh, just walking down. And you can see that they've set up these little gaming areas here so you can play video games together. So that's like the modern day foosball table or ping pong or something like that. So you can actually hang out with your remote colleagues while you're at the office. So some people think, oh, this is a bit big brother. Other people like in this case, for this is a real estate agency. In this case, uh, they really enjoy this setup and these monitors this is where they have their daily standups. They just have them all over the office. Small investment for actually the amount of team building that you get out of this. We're going to get a slightly weird, so probably those who have ever listened to the podcast or know me, you know I'm a big fan of telepresence. These are the drivable robots. They, you've probably seen them on the Big Bang Theory or uh, on a TED Talk, so Edward Snowden beamed in to give a TED Talk one year. But basically, you beam in just like on any video conferencing tool, and you can drive yourself around using the arrow keys of your keyboard. And the suitable technology office in, in San Francisco, 50% of their workforce shows up in the flesh, and 50% beam in via robot. So it is possible to have this sort of a mixed office, and this is how they work. It's weird at first until you get used to it, or just like any technology. And then there is, of course, virtual reality, which is making a, a big splash. If you haven't experienced it yet, I highly recommend that you find somebody with an Oculus Quest or go to a video arcade when they start opening up because virtual reality is amazing. It's just not very viable for places, you know, some place we're still struggling with conference room phones in some places. So virtual reality is a bit out there. However, there's a lot of uh, people moving to this situation, especially now. They're starting to get, you're starting to get, be able to feel people in virtual reality. So you can actually shake hands or give hugs and actually feel the other person. So the experience is becoming quite amazing. So I just want to mention it so that you know where the market is going. We're not quite there yet. I think the, I think the HR consulting word about that's going to be on a lucrative market. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds. This is the thing. All of these things start to change the culture in an organization and the rules in an organization significantly. If you've worked in an office with telepresence robots, you know that just having them around, like you can't shake hands. So instead you fist bump because that's much more 2D. And even just that changes our culture in an organization. So I would say going remote is a change program. So for all you change management coaches out there, um, think of it as a change program. Okay, so we've talked about presence a bit, and I'd like to just go to our last poll because I'm wondering, where is your infrastructure suffering right now? So let me go make sure that it's uh, highlighted. So if we go to slido.com again, maybe you still have it open. And the code 1115. Go ahead, let's put down where is your infrastructure suffering, let's say in general. And I'm not sure, I think you can only create, you're, you're only allowed to pick one on this one. So go ahead and just pick one. Where is your infrastructure suffering? And while we're taking this poll, what I'd like to do is I'd like to put you into breakout rooms just to quickly discuss in about four minutes so we can keep it short again. 
what is something that you could do to improve the infrastructure uh, at the office or at your home? What's something that you can do to improve? And then I'm going to show you the results because they're actually kind of surprising. So one last breakout room. I'm going to recreate. Put people into different rooms. Make sure everybody's got enough people in one room. And here we go. So what's one thing you can do to improve the infrastructure? What do you need to create more presence? I love all the people outside. Oh, such a good idea. When it's not raining, yes. <laughs> when it's, you're right. Good point. Good point. I'm glad to be inside if it's not. <laughs> That's true. It's true. All right, everybody's got 24 seconds. I'm going to show you the results. Da, da, da. It's a boy. Yeah, exactly. I'm actually surprised by the results. I have to say I am actually genuinely surprised by the results. And uh, I can't wait to show you nine more seconds. All right, so apologies. Yeah, Elsa was just in the middle of something and I pulled you all back. So, so sorry for that. What I'd like to do is show you the results because I am genuinely surprised by these results. So here we go. You probably are not because you've had a chance to discuss things with your group. Yeah. So it looks... <laughs> Bandwidth. Yep. The pillar, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, what is it called? Uh, the base of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Wi-Fi, right? In terms of being a remote worker. So I'm very curious. So somebody with internet, uh, with bad internet speed, what are the problems with the internet speed? What is going on there? Anybody want to explain? But there's one issue is, so avoid using Wi-Fi to make a, a, a call, a conference, use a landline. Okay. You have higher speed. You mean the LAN connection, physical LAN cable is what you're saying? Yeah, so even here, uh, for this session, all this session. What, what are they, uh, granddad? Hold, what? What are they, granddad? Oh, I have, uh, I, I make the test between Wi-Fi, using this with Wi-Fi or yeah. with the landline, I have a factor 100 difference. More stable. Wi-Fi is not stable. Yeah. And what is the bad Wi-Fi caused from? Is it just a, is it a Germany thing? Disney Plus and all the kids been out of school. Ah, it's sharing <laughs> the Wi-Fi. Right, 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 right. You don't know, have you got children? <laughs> No, that's why I'm like, huh? That's why you don't have to <laughs> right. I guess, I, I guess it's also linked to the fact that uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, Wi-Fi sources. And so each of them are somehow interfering. Uh, okay. So it's not the bandwidth, but it's uh, really the radio. Channel clash. Mm -hmm. I will be very boring with you. I'm sharing my Wi-Fi with nobody. I'm alone here. So <laughs> even if yeah. you make... Uh, yeah, come on. That's why I'm this way. And, <laughs> and, and, and you see after, let's say, four to six hours uh, web conference, you can see your, sometimes your system is broken down. You have cuts. Yeah. Uh, and it's absolutely, so I say, uh, one guy say, never use Wi-Fi when you make a, a conference call or whatever, or even a training. And when I'm going away, uh, when I'm traveling, I have also, uh, in Germany, I have a box. It's called a VLAN box. Or, um, uh, it's from Vodafone. It's using your um, 5G or 4G system. Mm -hmm. You can have a safe internet. But never share your Wi-Fi. Never. <laughs> but that's but lucky even, enough to have the luxury. I guess all the aspect is that everybody is using Netflix, Instagram, gym classes, and <laughs> cook. Oh cooking <laughs> online, yeah. things like that, and you have an, uh, one ISP, so you are sharing your bandwidth with it's other It's the Americans. People. It's the Americans. Everything works Let's blame them. until lunchtime. <laughs> and then after lunchtime, when the Americans get up, yeah. <laughs> all jokes. Uh, another, another trick is also clean your caches. So uh, before making a, a, a call, uh, re restart your computer. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you have a shutdown. 
Yeah, Craig. I find a wired headset helps a little bit as well because I used to use Bluetooth and the quality wasn't so good. I got that off of a couple of friends who have a recording yeah. studio and they avoid Bluetooth because they use this it, one. Just, it, it just adds to the problem. Yeah, better mic and, as well. And cable. In, in fact, I can, I can show you the difference of a mic. Watch, or just do this. This is me speaking through the headset. This is me speaking through the webcam. And this is me speaking through the microphone. Yeah. So, Andy, this is why I spend a little bit of time saying invest in your equipment. And then I would say also, if you can, if there's some way to invest in better Wi-Fi, uh, it is the pillar of remote working, right? It's like the basics of what we need. If you don't have good Wi-Fi, we're doomed, especially when we want to talk with other people. So the better the, our Wi-Fi, the more we can use video, the more different tools that can be set up. Um, so. Yeah, that the Wi-Fi is not where you want to save money, and equipment is not where you want to save money. Those are two places I would say get the best that you possibly can always. I don't want to spend too much time on infrastructure, though. We've seen a little bit, and uh, of course, I'm doing like uh, uh, shallow dives into a bunch of topics, but I just want you to, to, to get a feel for things. And if you want to take your deeper dive, I'll let you know in a second how we can do that. But the next topic about working together online, so we've uh, talked about persons. Sorry, yes. for, sorry for that. Actually, I mistook the time zone, and then I joined for 6 p.m. Irish time instead of German time. Sorry for that. That's my uh, this one. But then. Uh, I hear that uh, there is a link which contains uh, some of the useful links and all of that. So uh, I think I, I couldn't see it in my chat box as well. Uh, so if you can help me with that, uh, some useful link that would be good. And also maybe the recording later. For sure, the recording and all the links that we've put so far in the chat, Pierre is going to be sharing on the uh, meetup group. Perfect. So, and the, our typer is back. So whoever yeah, is, who's ever typing. Whoever is typing, please mute yourself. You're a fast typer, whoever it is. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> Dang. So yeah, and no worries. I'm glad that you could make it at all, Raj. So uh, yeah, good that uh, good that you're here. I was on time, but uh, different time zone. <laughs> different time. Yeah. Time zones, another thing. We're not going to dive in that today too much, but uh, something. But one last topic that I want to talk about is camaraderie and team building when we're online, because I really feel that that's an important part of working together online. And I think something that everybody's missing right now uh, while we're in COVID is how do we get that team spirit? How do we hang out? There's the, that, it's not really a loneliness thing. It's more like the, the hanging out time together, just the chit chat that we have. So I wanna quickly talk about that and then I'd like to do a game of Pictionary together and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. It's super fun. I think it's a fun way to end this and uh, something uh, really fun for people. So let me just show a couple of slides really quick. Just a couple of things that I wanna show folks. So I, I'm really a proponent of fun and having fun online. It's super important to me. It is not important to everybody. I have interviewed some teams who never speak. They do everything asynchronously. Um, and the owner of the company actually that I spoke to doesn't care about team building at all. In fact, he thinks it's a waste of time. So he doesn't care about your barbecue, what you did over the weekend. He cares if you get the work done. There are teams. So it's important to say team building exists on a scale and not everybody is on the same place in that scale. Some people love it and some people hate it. So one of the things we have to do though, we have to build it into our regular day, of course. So there's some things that we can do to build things into our regular day. The easiest one for team building is turning our cameras on, just people seeing each other. That's probably the number one thing you can do for team building is just turn the cameras on, look at each other in the face. So that's an easy one. And the next one are icebreakers. People also there's a scale of people liking those and not. That's why I always say it's okay to pass. But building icebreakers into your meeting, that helps build in a little bit of fun into the day. And of course, again, I had posted the link to the icebreakers before, and I'll post it again in a second. Your group chat, that's the natural virtual water cooler, of course, where people are posting cat pictures and books they've read, recipes they've tried, you know, great online yoga courses that they've taken. Um, this is sort of the, the thing that we can do in our day every day. And then the other part of team building is we can schedule it into our daily activities. However, we have to also be deliberate about doing it. So you, you're never, unless you're in virtual reality or some sort of virtual office, you will never accidentally bump into your colleagues online unless you've got that, like the real estate company with the videos all over the place. So we've really got to schedule it. 
Um, and that sort of makes it a little bit less serendipitous, but uh, it's still important. So virtual coffees, virtual lunches, we've all seen COVID has brought out the creative in all of us. You know, we've all done weird virtual things we never even thought of before. Um, but I would just encourage you to continue that with your team because it makes a difference. Meals, drinks, games, trivia nights that people are doing. And one of the biggest things that I've seen lately is video games. That is a great way for team building, for people to get together from anywhere. And in fact, kids are doing this naturally now, right? Like kids know how to work online because they've gone on quests with each other since they were five years old in all kinds of different language. My five-year-old neighbor kid, uh, he is doing World of Warcraft or Minecraft with people all over the world, learned how to speak English on his own this way at five years old. Kind of amazing, actually. And online, I've got a huge list of virtual team building activities that we can do. But I thought it would be fun to sort of end this uh, meetup with a game of Pictionary. And it's sort of going to be a speed game of Pictionary. So you, we're going to do this in different ways. I'm going to split you up into teams of about three or four people each. What I'm going to recommend is this link. We're going to use this link if I can find my chat. I've got too many windows open. This is the link that we're going to use. It's called Game Gal. I'm going to show it on the screen, and it allows you to generate uh, a word uh, that you're going to draw. So everybody hopefully can open this up. I'll show what it looks like. So you'll see here, and I'm going to say, oh, let me make the screen a little bit bigger. I'm going to say, why don't we use a medium word when you do this? So you're going to pick a medium word. You're going to choose Pictionary. You're going to choose a word. And then you're going to draw this and see if your team can guess it. So what I'm going to suggest on every team, one person's going to go. You can draw it. You can use a physical piece of paper and hold it up and draw it. Or you can use this jam board that I've created for everybody. And let me see. Okay, I've got way too many windows open. I can't find anything anymore. So in the jam board. Oops. Okay, if I can copy and paste correctly. So here's the jam board. So you can use a physical board or you can use a virtual board to do your drawing. This is the jam board. What you'll notice about the jam board, if I can share my screen really quickly, this is a very simple drawing tool. What you'll notice about the jam board is at the top here, there's multiple pages. So if you're seeing that somebody's already drawing, just go ahead and go to the second page or the third page, or the fourth, whatever you need to get your own page. And to draw, you just pick the pen, and you start to draw. So you can draw, you can put up a sticky note, so you know how to play Pictionary, so do your best. It's a really crude tool. Or use some sort of a paper and pen. But everybody should take a turn. Go ahead and pick your word, draw something, and then the team that gets the most words guessed, I'm going to put you on the honor system, is going to be the big winner. Spoiler alert, everybody gets a prize because I can't bear to give some people prizes and not others. So everybody gets a prize, but we'll know who the virtual winners are. So we'll break into rooms. So I hope the instructions are clear. Everybody's going to take a turn. You're going to use the random word generator, pick a word, use your medium of choice. You can use the jam board that I've provided, or you can draw it on a piece of paper. And I'm going to give everybody seven minutes to play Pictionary and whichever team gets the most words is the virtual winner of our game. So let's recreate the rooms again. Any questions before we go into the room? All right, here we go. Have a really good time. You're beaming everyone back. I'm being, yeah, I'm beaming everybody back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With my virtual celebration uh, background, no. So, Fabio, I think that was present. Sorry? Fabio was still drawing the present after we got drawn, beamed back. Oh, that's, sorry for the interruption. That's right, Sam. <laughs> All right, so uh, I have to say I fully enjoyed watching this jam board go. That was, some, that was really fun if you were just watching from the outside and know how. So, uh, let's see. Team one, let's, how many people did each team get? Let's see, we have... Six teams. So team one with Katrine, Marcus, Olaf, and Sasha. How many did you guys get? 13. Pretty good. Amazing, actually. Okay, team two. Amarantho, Jayton, and Monica. And sorry for the American botching of the names. <laughs> I think we've got about eight, I think. All right. Yeah. 
Breakout room three, Anu, Dorita, Scott, and I'm not going to try. Wash, Tech, Glitch, Walkie. I'm very sorry. How many did you guys get? We had fun. We didn't count. <laughs> Just lots of fun. <laughs> also good. Also good. All right, room four, Artur, uh, Craig, Gail, and Muna. We had 10. 10. Really good. That's crazy. All right, uh, Dove, Elsa, Kati, Pierre, and Raj. 275. <laughs> oh, 103. <laughs> no, the right answer would be 42. <laughs> uh, it would be 42. Come on. <laughs> After no. 200, we stopped counting. Uh, of course, of course. Yeah. Can All I right, in, in, the in the words? In the what? 200 characters for all the words together, I guess. 200 characters. <laughs> All right, and the last one, Fabio, Simon, and uh, your Sergit. Get uh, eight. eight. Okay. Must be more than that. We did about four in the last minute. <laughs> so then I'm going to, I know that Pierre said 275, but I, I feel like as a judge, I'm going to, that's uh, it's a little suspect. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it that uh, Katrine, Marcus, Olaf, and Sasha, you guys are officially the virtual winners of our Pictionary game tonight. So congratulations. Like I said, everybody gets a prize. And uh, in order to give you a prize, what I'm doing, I'm sending you a link to, you've seen me hold up all these cards, these super cards. So I've sent you a uh, sampler that you can print out yourself. And these are the, the eight most popular cards that are there. So, oh, awesome. So I want to just quickly just recap uh, what we've done today, because I know it's been sort of a speed drive by of uh, all kinds of different things, but I swear there was a method to my madness. So give me one second, we will end on time. I've got one minute. No, it's not time boxed. You're in my room. You take I the time see. you want. Okay, well, I'm not going to go too much over one more minute or two more minutes that. because I, we've been <laughs> online for a couple of hours, so I want to make sure that we all get offline. That's so. not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. It's mine. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, oops. Pardon me. So, just to reiterate, there is no one right way. As you can see, there's many different styles and many different ways to get remote working right. And what works for you may not work for other people. But when we get it right, the payoff is really huge because we as individuals get the freedom to work when and where we're most productive and our companies become stronger and more connected at the same time. So I feel like the payout for remote work is actually really huge when we get it right. And the idea is we need to perfect our own games by finding where we're most productive and getting the right equipment in place in order to do that and to set up our schedules and our days in ways that work most for us and don't underestimate how hard that actually is. And then in order to really work together online together, we need to create alignment and presence with our colleagues and camaraderie. The fun component, I think, is a really important component of team. And so those are sort of the things that I've tried to highlight, um, I know, in, in a whole bunch of different exercises today, and there's a lot more that we can go into. And I've, I've sort of briefed this, you know, touched the surface, but if you want to go deeper, uh, then I'm offering the Work Together Anywhere workshop, and I'm giving a special deal, and I'm going to time box this just for tonight, which is if you'd like to join the workshop, You've got to email me to before midnight Amsterdam time tonight. And the subject should say, I want to rock online. And then I'll give you the deal of if you want to join the Work Together Anywhere workshop, it's usually $4.95 that I'm giving it to this group for $3.50 plus a signed copy of my new book uh, with Wiley. So if that's something that you're interested in, it doesn't have to be the, the workshop that's coming up this Thursday. It could be a workshop in the next few months, but you do have to email tonight with uh, I want to rock online if you want the deal. Otherwise, at midnight, the deal ends just like pumpkins. Uh, so that's uh, uh, the Cinderella and the pumpkin. So that's, uh, that's the deal. You just have to email me there. And I'll send a copy of the slides to everybody. So uh, I really appreciate you guys joining me for the full two hours or whatever time that you've given. I, uh, I really enjoyed meeting you all. And to round this out, I would just love to have everybody, uh, whoever is left and would want to just say one more thing, I'd love to just go through and just say one thing that you've taken away and learned um, that you're going to apply uh, to your own situation. 
So we'll just take a couple minutes if anybody wants to speak up as a way of recapping information also, it helps us to remember. I love Pictionary, it was part, that was fun, really playful, it was great, thank you. Pictionary, love it. Yeah. Easy to do, right? Yeah, easy. Easy to do and set yeah. up. Yeah. Awesome, anybody else? What I will do in my retrospectives, I will do the breaks after 45 minutes and uh, really do a break for like five minutes and then get back to the room. I think that's a great help for the team to focus again. Awesome. Someone else? I think it was the second uh, breakout room what we did that we have to draw a picture that when I'm yeah. the best of myself. That was super cool. Awesome. Jack Russell. Definitely enjoyed the, the, the game girl Pictionary. That was very good. Definitely will use that. Good That's icebreaker. Awesome. You do all kinds of stuff with that one. Don't yeah. jump off the roof, Pierre. <laughs> he wants to make everyone sick. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, just have one thing to say. Oh, I love your sound effects. <laughs> You're in the wrong show. <laughs> no, it's a show. I don't care. We do whatever we want. We are free people. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I learned from uh, from Scott to be a pirate, right? <laughs> <laughs> so my business plan. Yeah. Can I just okay. say something, Lizette? It's it's not a point, but um, I saw you in keynote, and I've seen you online. And I preferred the interaction of and the confidence that you have online. Um, yeah, so I definitely got more of this than I did in you know listening to your keynote because you can I can actually see your passion and your interaction. Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, I like I like online better. It's a better platform for me. It's sort yeah. of where I thrive. Yeah, it's a weird yeah. thing. And and you you just got so much energy. Yeah. And so you're welcome here whenever you want. It's the same for all of you. If you want to share something, you can use Agile Praxis as a platform for us, right? To share ideas, concepts, whatever is exchange. I don't want to have a webinar, a traditional one. It's more conversation. It has to be cool. And you can be silly and you can be serious. You are whatever you are. Uh, and that's, that's fine. Uh, I shared with you also the link to my my online booking system. If you want to talk, because I propose my uh, to support to help something, because I'm just not working, so I have plenty of time. And and if you want just to share working on thing, you want to f you need the feedback, feel free to ping. I'm very happy to help. Thank you. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. Uh, Thank you, good Pierre. So. Thank you, all of you. Now, I would say Thank step you. away from your laptops. You've been online for a couple of hours. Really good to go outside and look at something off in the distance. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, we, uh, unfortunately, Craig's doing a talk at nine. I'm doing a talk at two hours. <laughs> oh, no. Well, in those in between, take some time off. Get Don't do food. emails. <laughs> yeah, get some food. Get some energy. And good I'm luck. Okay. I just have my 14 hours of screen time every day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've, okay. I've been on since I started something um, with a bunch of folk from China to Brazil at, um, I think it was seven o'clock my time this morning. So yeah, I've had, a, I've had quite a long time. That's, no, it was six o'clock my time. Oh so. my God. Well, yeah, I had a couple of hours worried. in the middle. I don't know whether, Craig, I may not make your talk now. <laughs> You've seen it before. <laughs> so if, if you, if you want, if you want to attend a, a, a chat, we have a chat with a friend of of, uh, from Lausanne in Switzerland, it's but eight o'clock in the morning from eight to nine. And your, your time or real time? Yeah, yeah real time meaning uh, central. Which mean, the lines are through Britain. Central the European lines are time. Through Britain. <laughs> yeah, no, no you, you're Brexiters. You're no Don't longer part Brexit. of my world, right? <laughs> We keep the meridian. Uh, I don't care. It's seven a.m. for you. That's good. It's good for your health, right? So if you want to attend, so we had people from Canada. So good, mate. Is we are speaking about complaining a lot. It is cool, and we record the sessions too. So when is when is this session that you're talking about? Uh, just ping me, and uh, I send yeah. you an invite. Is 
Uh, it's fun. It has to be fun. It's about every sharing. Every day fun. or once a week or? Every day. Oh, every day. Oh. Yeah, because we, my, my friend was depressing. He's a safe coach, you know. I know with this bloody methodology, you have to be depressed, right? And I say, okay, you want to do this, but well, let's have a, a chat every morning so you can complain. So we invite a lot of people who have GB Weinsberg. I say, oh, sounds cool, your stuff. Come with us. Then he came from Canada. Ping. What time's in Canada? <laughs> Yeah, it's to be honest. Like three it's just, in the morning. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. Well, I can't do tomorrow or Thursday because I got this group of folk still. Uh, I'll hit you up for the details. I'll get wake up with Pierre. You could be my. Uh, you could be like my. It's uh, not here. Oh, no. A great hog day alarm. You could be. <laughs> and and that, I'm still trying to work out the takeaways, but uh, thank you for sharing. Yeah. So uh, uh, the same here. So uh, we recorded a session on, on, on the platform, of Zoom platform, because Lizette was the boss here. She wanted to control everything. Yeah, I have a control freak. So uh, I have no access directly to the recording. So once the recording is made available, I will copy and paste the chat in my Google Drive and share it with you uh, through the, the chat uh, of Meetup. So you can have access to everything. And I will edit a little bit of the, the, the video and we'll make it available on our YouTube channel. And all the recording is make a copy for you, Lizette. That's, that's the deal. And that's okay. You can use whatever. Okay? Great. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, Thank you so much. It was well, lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much fun. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Yeah, and thank you to everybody else who contributed because that's what made it. In a brilliant session. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you guys. Bye. Hey, Pierre, I have yeah. an idea. Tell me. Because when we.